Good evening. I'm going to uh, call this meeting to order for the Durham District School Board meeting of Monday, January 23rd. I'd like to um, proceed with the, begin with this meeting with the land acknowledgement. The Durham District School Board acknowledges that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships, both historic and modern, with the territories upon which our school boards and schools are located. Today, this area is home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle, Turtle Island. We acknowledge that the Durham region forms a part of the traditional and treaty territories of the Mississaugas of Scugog Islands First Nations, the Mississauga peoples, and the treaty territory of the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nations. It is on these ancestral and treaty lands that we teach, learn, and live. I am going to uh, ask uh, at this point in time that uh, trust, uh, Trustee Arsenal introduce our, our school that will be doing O Canada and some selected numbers. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Colonel Farewell Public School Junior Choir. Choir members are in grade four to six and they are uh, comp accompanied by Gloria Parks, junior music teacher at Farewell, and conducted by Kimberly Bridge Bridges, grade one teacher at Farewell. Principal Tina Mandel is also in attendance this evening and we extend a warm welcome to all of you on behalf of the Durham District School Board. Um, in, adi uh, in addition to singing O Canada, the Farewell Choir will be singing a two-part original song, It Snows, It Snow Wonder, Wonder by Stephen Lawrence, a catchy, upbeat song that shares the joy and wonder of the unexpe unexpected snowfall. Yeah, if, if, uh, if you uh, may, could everybody please stand for uh, O Canada.
thank you so much uh, to uh, Colonel Farrell Public School for presenting uh, Doing Old Canada and their songs. It is something that I've truly missed over the, the COVID, uh, trying, having, having our students present um, and hearing their great voices um, in our boardroom. Thank you again. Moving on to the uh, next item on the agenda, is there any declarations of interest? There is no declarations of interest declared at this time. I have uh, the adoption of the uh, agenda at this point in time. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda as distributed? Trustee Cunningham, seconded by Trustee Brown. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? The motion carried. The uh, agenda is adopted as uh, distributed. On item six, we have minutes from our previous Mooney, um, uh, meetings. I would like to, um, can I have a motion to receive the two sets of minutes, um, unless there's an objection, to, to receive the regular board meetings of October 17th, 2022, and the special board meeting of November 7th, 2022. And that's the motion to receive. Trustee Pinello, seconder, Trustee Arsenault, all those in favor? Opposed? Those minutes are um, are received. I am looking also the next set of uh, set of minutes again is unless there's an objection to approve the minutes um, to basically approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of November 21st, 2022, and the special board meeting of December 5th, 2022. Trustee Arsenal. Trustee Thatcher, all in favor? Opposed? Those minutes have been approved. On to the, the uh, ministry memorandums uh, and information update. I will turn uh, this over to Director Camille williams taylor to provide us an update. Thank you. Thank you uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, I will provide a short update uh, to the board. Uh, first of all, uh, I do uh, want to report that I've received a very warm welcome from staff and community members since starting as Director of Education just two weeks ago. I have already had uh, many engaging meetings um, to get up to speed on the work that has been taking place across the district. I've also had the opportunity to visit some schools and some family schools meetings, and I look forward to visiting many more in the months to come. I'd also like to recognize and wish all families who celebrated the Lunar New Year over the weekend um, with continued peace, happiness, and prosperity. Uh, the school year calendar uh, is an item of discussion and certainly want to update uh, the board as to where we are in that process. Uh, annually, the Ministry of Education releases a memorandum to school boards that references Regulation 304 of the Education Act, which requires school boards to submit proposed school year calendars to the ministry for approval by a set date. Last school year, the memorandum was received in early November with set a set approval date of March the 1st. We want to inform trustees for this school year that we're still awaiting direction from the ministry for the 2023-2024 school year calendar. Once direction is received, we will engage in a consultation process with education partners. A board report will then come forward to trustees seeking approval of the four calendars, elementary, regular, and modified, secondary, regular, and modified, prior to the submission to the Ministry of Education. In the absence of a memo, we don't have any set timelines to share, but we will provide updates as they come available. 
Uh, North Oshawa Public School Funding Announcement, Associate Director Wright will go into more detail later in this uh, meeting, but I felt it important to share that the Minister of Education visited Durham last Friday to help to announce the province's funding commitment for the new Oshawa Public School. With the po population growth taking place in Durham Region, we know that this is a topic of great interest to families as we plan for new schools to accommodate this growth. And finally, uh, we know that the shortage of bus drivers continues to pose challenges in transportation. Uh, we will bring an update to report to board on February 21st board meeting uh, to inform trustees, uh, to update trustees rather, and the public. Uh, Chair, that's all for my update today. Any questions at this time for Director? Seeing none. Moving on to item eight, public question period. I would like to invite Dylan to ask the first question this evening. And I believe Dylan, Dylan is online. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Dylan. <laughs> Go ahead and ask your question. All right, my my question tonight is about the health and safety measure. About two months ago, on November 21st, 2022, there was an information item that was brought forward that explained all of the health and safety measures that were in place, including the attendance patterns. But I was wondering what were the attendance patterns and health and safety measures like during the 2020-2021 school year from September 8th, 2020 to June 30th, 2021 and during the 2021-2022 school year from September 7th, 2021 to June 29th, 2022. So during the height of the pandemic and why is the difference in the attendance patterns from the 2020-2021 school year comparing to the 2021-2022 school year? So that's my question I have for this time. Thank you, Dillian. I would ask that uh, Associate Director Markovsky respond, if he could provide a response to Dillian at this time. Thank you. Thank you, and through you, Chair Edwards, and thank you for the question, Dillian. Uh, first of all, I'll start off that during the two years that you're questioning, Dillian, the 2020-21 year and the 21-22 year, uh, it would, uh, it's pretty safe to say that the attendance patterns throughout those two years was constantly evolving as the landscape with the pandemic was shifting um, throughout the, that entire time. We had times where all students were learning virtually and we had other times where students were learning in person. And again, those factors do impact attendance. And as a result, unless we're looking at a very specific snapshot in time, it's difficult to compare annual attendance trends of those two years. I do want to elaborate a little bit about the health and safety measures that you're questioning. There were several in place during those two years. Uh, they included masking and PPE. There was self-screening tools. There was enhanced cleaning protocols. There were social gatherings that were limited and at one point even restricted. Uh, we had sports and recreational activities that were limited. Uh, we had travel restrictions. We had mandatory isolation requirements and contact tracing and other public health measures that were in place. You'll probably recall we had entire cohorts dismissed and isolated in our classrooms as well. So plenty of factors there and I think all of that to say that there was a significant impact uh, on attendance as a result. Uh, and I think I'll conclude there that really, unless we're looking at a specific snapshot in time, there was significant fluctuation in, in attendance patterns. Thank you. I do have a supplemental as well. Okay, Dylan, you can have a supplemental. I look back at last year, or especially during the, those two school years, especially last school year, we had a significantly high absenteeism rate during the high of the Omicron wave last year. And in March and April of 2021, there was also a rise during the third wave of the pandemic. I was wondering what were things like during those two years? Has those were the two years we went to virtual and that time period in September through January of, of those two years? Associate <laughs> Director Markowski. <laughs> and thank you and through you, Chair, and thank you for the subsequent question, Dylan. 
What I will say is, I guess, if you're in relation to the variants and the peaks that we had throughout the pandemic, we did see fluctuations in attendance patterns, Dylan. But when uh, schools were instructed to go virtual, we saw different fluctuations there because the um, requirement necessarily for students, let's say they were sick or not sick, but because they were learning within their own homes at the time, it was hard to compare what in-person attendance patterns would look like versus virtual schooling. I hope that kind of helps answer your question, but you're absolutely right. We did have moments within the pandemic that where we saw spikes uh, in attendance patterns, and that was uh, as a result of some of the trending um, information that was coming through the pandemic, for example, the variants at the time. Yeah, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five, and wave six. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dylan, for your questions. As always, it's great to see you uh, ask you. questions. Um, and uh, thank you, Associate uh, Direct uh, Director Markovsky, for your response. At this time, I would like uh, to pass it over to Executive Lead Sergeant to read out uh, questions uh, that have been asked to be read out. Thank you. Thank you, and through you, Chair Edwards. Uh, we have two questions in total from Nina and Anushka asking about when there'll be a new public school in West Whitby, uh, as there's a great need for one in the area of Taunton Road and Coronation Road in the broader West Whitby community, uh, as there are multiple schools acting as holding schools in that area. Uh, I'll pass it over to Associate Director Wright uh, to respond. Thanks very much, and through you, <coughs> Madam Chair. Uh, certainly, I think everybody in the room agrees uh, with the need for one or more new elementary schools in West Whitby. Uh, we have uh, heard a lot of feedback from uh, that community uh, and certainly from, uh, from our schools as well. Uh, to that end, the Board of Trustees has recently uh, submitted a letter to the Ministry of Education on this topic, requesting the proactive approval of a capital project in that area. Uh, as it is ultimately the province that is responsible for approving funding and construction of a new school. Uh, we have included requests for a new school in that area in our last two capital priority submissions to the province, and West Whitby will undoubtedly be one of our top capital priorities for submission uh, when we receive the next call for capital projects. Uh, for information, there are six potential build sites earmarked in West Whitby, uh, but for clarity, uh, due to the nature of residential development uh, generally being scattered rather than focused, uh, a new school serving West Whitby may not be in the immediate neighborhood of all students attending. Uh, lastly, uh, again for information, capital projects can take several years to come to completion after initial project approval. And so given the, uh, the pressure and the need, uh, we will certainly continue to push for an approval as early as possible. Thank you. Thank you uh, again for the questions and thank you for the, the answer, Associate Director Wright. Moving on to the next item, I, item nine, report from, I would ask Trustee Christine Thatcher to bring forward the report from the Committee of the Whole and Camera. Thank you and through you, Chair Edwards. Uh, this is the report from the Committee of the Whole. <coughs> the Board approved the actions of the Committee of the Whole in camera and adopted the motions made at the Committee of the Whole in camera meeting as follows. Administrative transfers and placement. Chair Edwards, this is my report. Uh, Trustee Thatcher, would you like to uh, move a motion to approve the report? I will do so. Okay, I have a motion to approve the report to the Committee of the Whole and Camera. Um, I have, need a seconder, Trustee Cat Cunningham. All those in favor? Anybody opposed? Motion is, is approved. Moving on to the next item is the good news from the system. I again pass it over to Director Camille uh, Williams Taylor. Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, this is uh, a video report, uh, and so uh, my understanding is that uh, someone's going to press play, uh, and uh, the good news will be brought forward. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of DDSB students and staff, we are happy to bring you good news from across the system. 
Congratulations to Henry Street High School student Olivia Flanagan, who is one of the handful of students in the GTA to win the City News 680 Junior Traffic Reporter Contest, along with cash prizes for herself and the school and a virtual tour of City News 680. Olivia flexed her reporting skills and delivered a traffic and weather report live on air. Jay Clark Richardson Collegiate student Savannah Blair was accepted to the 2022 to 2023 Andre DeGrasse Future Championship Scholarship Program. Savannah was selected as one of 16 student athletes across Canada. Congratulations, Savannah, and continue to work hard and make the most of this opportunity. DDSB high school students at Dumbarton, Pine Ridge, Pickering, Ajax, and Jay Clark Richardson partnered with the University of Toronto Scarborough through the Modern Day Grow Up Project, learning about identity using the Kwanzaa principles of Ngozo Saba. The program involved Black University students sharing their lived experiences, pursuing higher education, and acting as mentors for the Black students in the program. Two-time Olympian Jennifer Wakefield visited the students at Kendrick Public School to introduce a game called Four Ball. Learning skills directly from a gold medalist was inspiring for the students as they came away with the belief that if you work hard and show determination, you can achieve your goals. Students also have the opportunity to learn about her Olympic experiences and even see her gold medal. Schools across the region celebrated the holiday season with concerts, open houses, art gallery displays, and many treats. Parents and guardians attended the festivities in person for the first time in a few years and participated in interactive showcases of our talented DDSB students. It was great to see the halls and auditoriums filled with everyone's smiling faces. Thank you to all of our schools throughout the DESB who donated throughout the month of December. Thanks to Bayview Valley students for donating 368 pounds of food, Leslie Reed Pearson students and families for their hygiene product drive for Horizon House, and Ajax High School students who raised $330 for the school and toy drive, to name a few. Your generous donations were greatly appreciated and will be spread throughout the community. Staff and students raised money, filled hampers, donated toys, clothing, and toiletries. A huge shout out to the staff who led and orchestrated these in activities across the region. The DDSB's two newest elementary schools, Willows Walk and Rosemary Brown, held holiday and community celebrations in December. School staff celebrated their journey as a new school by showcasing student talent, culture, identity, and success with families and friends. Both schools had an amazing evening. Thank you to all the families and guests who joined in celebrating both Willows Walk and Rosemary Brown schools. Eastdale CVI students participated in an experimental learning offsite. Construction and transportation specialist high skill major students traveled to Fleming College and spent the day learning about high demand careers in their field, while also getting to try out heavy equipment and simulators. Grade 12 chemistry students attended the Ontario Tech University for the day to participate in a DNA lab where they learned about biotechnology techniques that are used in the field. These opportunities gave students insight into various pathways and allowed them to experience a day full of valuable learning. A big congratulation goes out to members of J. Clark Richardson Collegiate's robotics team who competed in Ontario Tech's University Engineering Competition, with all three teams placing in the top 10 and one team placing third. The Stormbots Green team also competed at the Scarborough First Tech Challenge Qualifiers in a field of 24 robots. After months of building and coding, they were ready to compete, making it to the semifinals. The VEX Robotics team also competed in the Mississauga VEX Robotics Competition Qualifiers. After six tough matches, they made it through to the elimination bracket and will be competing again in February after making improvements. We thank Trey Stell for their generous donation of crates of cheese to the Make-A-Wish Depot and GL Roberts CVI. Many families received cheese and a hamper of items to help them throughout the holiday season. Thank you, Trey Stell, for your exceptionally generous donation. O'Neill CVI students and staff held a bullying prevention and awareness conference with their leadership class and grade 7 and 8 students from Queen Elizabeth, Dr. S.J. Phillips, and Mary Street Public Schools in November. Both secondary and elementary students reported great conversations around effective strategies for interacting positively with others. A holiday practical learning program dance was held at Donald A. Wilson Secondary School on December 16th. This dance is for the secondary PLP and developmental learning classes within the DDSB and provides students in small classes with social opportunities that they may not otherwise have had. We are so happy to see the following schools participate in the dance. Donald A. Wilson, Henry Street, Maxwell Heights, Anderson, Sinclair, Brooklyn, R.S. McLaughlin, J. Clark Richardson, Pickering, Dumbarton, and Pine Ridge. The dates of significance, as you can see, takes us up to the end of February. Thank you to Roman and Lily from J. Clark Richardson Collegiate for reading this month's good news.
Thank you for the uh, good news report. Moving on to recommended, recommended actions, uh, 11A, uh, the report from standing committee meeting December 5th and January 9th. I will ask uh, Trustee Christine Thatcher to bring forward the reports. Thank you. Thank you and through you, Chair. I move that the board now receive the minutes of the December 5th, 5th 2022 and the January 9th, 2023 standing committee meeting and approve the actions of the January 9th, 2023 Standing Committee meeting. Just as a note for trustees, the actions of the December 5th, 23 Committee of the Whole in Camera Standing Committee meeting were approved at the December 5th, 2023 Special Board meeting. Thank you. So there is a, a move, actually a move to uh, uh, basically approve the December 5th, uh, 20, no, sorry, the January 9th, 2023, because the 20, uh, the 20, December 5th one has already been approved. So <laughs> just to make that clear, <laughs> I think everybody, so I have a, a mover, Trustee Thatcher, a seconder. Yes, Michelle. Trustee Arsenault. Any questions? Okay, uh, motion to uh, approved. Those are in favor? Opposed? That motion carries, thank you. Moving on to item 12A and under information items, the interim financial report for the first quarter, and I pass it over to Associate Director David Wright. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and through you, it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce Senior Finance Manager Jennifer Machen, who will present the report this evening. Thank you, and through you, Chair. Uh, the purpose of this report is to provide the Board of Trustees with an update on the 2022-23 revised estimates and operating expenditures as at November 30th, 2022, or Q1. For the 2022-2023 revised estimates, overall revenue increased by 10.7 million from estimates to a total of 891 million. And this was as a result of enrollment increases, staffing changes, and other changes including deferred revenue and draw on accumulated surplus. Overall expenditures also increased by 10.7 million from estimates. This change is driven by salary and benefit changes and other changes including deferred revenue and enveloping. Specific details of these changes are outlined on pages two through six of the report and appendices A and B of the report. Capital budget items have also been updated to reflect adjusted timelines and revised funding allocations. Details are summarized in Appendix C of the report. Operating expenditures for the period ending November 30th, 2022, or Q1, are 21.5% of the 2022-2023 revised estimates amount. This expenditure level is consistent with prior year, and it is estimated that operating expenditures for the current year will be on target. Details by expenditure category are summarized on Appendix D of the report. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Questions on the quarterly report, report, trustees? Trustee Morton. Thank you, and through you. I have a question regarding capital budget. The 19 million decrease in new construction expenditures, could you explain that, please? Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, I don't have specific details in front of me, but I can tell you that um, the amounts have been updated to reflect adjusted timelines, so that's the expected expenditures within the timeline. 
certainly. So the numbers in the revised estimates were adjusted to reflect adjusted uh, timelines for expenditures. So they change depending on when we expect those expenses to go through the budget. Is that satisfactory with the supplementary? Supplementary, Trustee Morton. Thank you, and, and through you again, Chair. I'm looking at the chart on page 51, um, and I'm looking at transportation, and we have spent 27 million, budgeted 24 million. So is this telling us that in our finance meetings, we need to be talking about <laughs> going to the province and talking about the actual cost of transportation? Uh, thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, the, on page 51, that variance between the 24.5 million and the 27 million, is that what you're looking at? Certainly, so that actually is just a change in revenues expected um, from estimates, so time of budget, to revised estimates. And that's largely due to increased enrollment. Further questions from trustees on the quarterly report? Seeing none, thank you very much for, the, uh, for that information. Moving on to item 11B, we're talking about the supplementary funds uh, summary. Again, uh, I'll, do, I'll pass it on to Associate Director David Wright. Thank you, Madam Chair, and likewise, I will uh Beg your indulgence and, and uh, welcome Jennifer to present this report as well. Thank you, and through you, Chair. Uh, the purpose of this report is to provide the Board of Trustees with an update on the supplementary funding that has been announced or received to date for 2022-2023. $4.6 million in supplementary funding has been reflected in the 2022-2023 revised estimates, and all supplementary funding received, together with all corresponding expense expenses, will be fully reflected in the annual financial statements of the board in accordance with PSAB standards. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Questions from trustees? Uh, I just uh, just a question for you, Jennifer, just for clarification again, is that this is a full list, and I know that not all of them are currently reflected, and just uh, could you just explain why that is they are not necessarily cur uh, currently reflected in the uh, in the budget at this point in time? Thank you. Uh, thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, so many of the grants are not included in the revised estimates due to inconsistency for year-over-year -year comparisons of board operations and to maintain consistency in presentation between the estimates and revised estimates. Um, the nature of this funding is that it may be received at any point during the year, so this is not necessarily a comprehensive list of everything that will be received towards the end of the year, but as I mentioned, all funding received will be fully reflected in the financial statements of the board. Thank you. <laughs> Any other further questions? Okay, Trustee Morton. My finger isn't working on this thing sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, and through you, Chair Edwards. I'm looking at the chart on page 58, supplementary funding summary. Ministry of Education Student Achievement Division for math additional qualification subsidy program. I think everyone in the province is concerned about math and perhaps we have lost ground during COVID. Is 65,000 sufficient or should we be considering more for the study of math? I'm thinking more. Go ahead, Jennifer. Uh, thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, I would also point out there is a renewed mathematics strategy grant also included, uh, not specifically for the AQ funding, but um, that has been included on this chart as well. I see no other further questions. We're gonna move on uh, to uh, trustee expenses, and again, Associate uh, Director David Wright. 
Thank you very much, Madam Chair. The report starts on page 59 of your package. The charts in the analysis section on the following page reflect expenses that were reimbursed to trustees over the last year of their term. Uh, these amounts agree with what has been posted publicly on the trustee expense section of our website. Uh, and if you have any questions about the amounts included, I'd be happy to try and answer them for you. Any questions from trustees? Seeing none, thank you again, Associate De <laughs> David Wright. Uh, the moving on then to the quarterly construction. This is the Associate David Wright <laughs> uh, report, it seems, but moving on to the quarterly construction with major project progress report. <laughs> thank you. The bright side, Madam Chair, is that you don't need to listen to me. Uh, it's my welcome, uh, my pleasure to welcome uh, Lisa Bianca, Head of Facility Services, uh, this evening, who will present the report. Thank you, and through you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm here this evening to uh, provide an update on the status of uh, construction and major projects uh, as of December 31st, 2022. Um, this is a quarterly report, so you will see this uh, report four times during the year, so uh, we try and provide uh, uh, updates throughout the year uh, to keep everyone abreast of, uh, of development. So uh, we are in the very fortunate position uh, to be working on five major new school builds as well as a uh, major addition. Um, they are all in various stages of development and uh, you'll see on uh, page two of the report, page 67 of your package, there are a number of uh, steps and stages and, uh, and uh, sort of hoops we have to go through to, uh, to bring a project to, uh, to fruition, both municipally and with the, uh, and with the province. Uh, so I'm happy to report that uh, we are progressing well uh, up in Beaverton. Uh, we uh, have awarded the uh, construction contract and uh, we uh, anxiously, anxiously await a, a ministry announcement um, uh, so we may uh, proceed into uh, construction uh, in the spring. Um, we are, uh, are quite positive. Uh, we are nearing the end of our site plan agreement negotiations with the municipality as well as uh, almost uh, in receipt of our building permit. Uh, good news, uh, good news all around. Uh, Pickering Creekwood uh, is also progressing through development. Uh, we are working with the uh, city to obtain uh, uh, ownership of the site, which they have owned for many, many years. We're working through rezoning and uh, and severance options um, as well with them. So, uh, in the while that's going on, we are working uh, to uh, achieve a site plan agreement and uh, and development that way. Uh, Mary Street uh, Public School Edition. Uh, we were very, uh, very excited to receive approval to proceed uh, uh, just before Christmas uh, this year, December 21st. And uh, that project uh, is uh, preparing to go out for tender any day now. We expect to have bids in early February and that will uh, allow us to, uh, budget permitting, allow us to get into the ground uh, in the spring. So uh, a long awaited one there. Um, as we discussed earlier, as you are aware, uh, Minister Lecce uh, attended our site in North Oshawa last Friday to announce uh, uh, approval of the North Oshawa Public School. Uh, fencing is up and uh, we are waiting for the weather to break to, uh, to get into construction. Uh, documents are in hand and we are, we are ready to go. Uh, unnamed North Oshawa Secondary School is, uh, we have an architect uh, assigned um, uh, as of uh, last, uh, last fall and we're working well through the development process. We've engaged the city for discussions and uh, if anybody's on their way to Costco, you can, uh, you can see our site uh, prominently on the corner by the roundabout. So uh, it's moving quite well. Uh, similarly with uh, a name Pickering Seton, we're working through uh, the design process and approvals. So uh, very happy to see all those moving ahead. Uh, in addition to those, we have uh, six uh, child care uh, projects uh, underway, various stages of development. The remaining projects are all um, additions to the building, so um, a little more um, involved than the interior renovations, but all are uh, moving well. Um, 
uh, major projects. There's no shortage of major projects uh, ongoing. This is the time of year where a lot of uh, our projects are tendering. We're getting pricing and all of that and, and getting ready to really move forward in the spring and on into the summer. So full range of projects, office renovations. Uh, so we re retain a focus on ventilation, uh, bringing uh, robust ventilation throughout all of our buildings in the, in the board. So we continue with that uh, initiative as well. Um, lots going on, and uh, with that, I, uh, I welcome any questions you may have. Questions, Trustee? Trustee Cunningham. Thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, I apologize if you said this and I didn't quite understand it, but I'm noticing that almost, well, no, actually every build that was scheduled for September 2023, all of them have been moved to September 2024, and I'm not quite understanding why every build would have the same delay. Thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, throughout the uh, the approval process with the ministry is uh, is quite lengthy. Um, we have uh, submitted for uh, approvals for some projects, and over the past three years, the nature of the cost of construction has risen risen so precipitously that the funding that we received in 2017 or 2018 simply wasn't sufficient to actually build the projects. So once our cost consultant report came in, we had to go back to the ministry and we had to re-engage for additional funding and that is, uh, that is a very lengthy process. So unfortunately that was the case. Um, with Pickering, um, that's partly the case for us, but it's also the, uh, the site has taken a little bit longer uh, to, uh, to develop, um, so we weren't able to, uh, to proceed uh, in, in the original timeline. Great, thanks. Madam Chair, can I jump in and just provide a little bit more insight into that one? Yes. And I apologize ahead, for the trustees Jordan. that are waiting. I just think that there's a little bit more context we can add. I uh, appreciate your response, Lisa. Um, all of these projects weren't originally scheduled to open in 2023. Some of them have been delayed multiple times. There's been a real struggle getting through the approvals process, speaking bluntly with the Ministry of Education. We own some of that delay and that sometimes working with consultants, working with architects, et cetera, it takes a little bit longer to, to come up with a design that everybody's happy with that we can move forward to submit to the ministry uh, for approval. Uh, but I think when you're talking to your provincial uh, colleagues, uh, there will be a, a, a very consistent or similar um, sentiment that capital projects went through an extended period of delayed approvals from the Ministry of Education. Um, the ministry has recognized that, uh, that they own some responsibility for those delays. Uh, and uh, the former Board of Trustees did communicate to the ministry asking for um, uh, expedited approvals for a number of these uh, projects so that we can get in the ground understanding the enrollment pressures we play. So uh, certainly as an organization we're committed to doing everything we can now to keep these projects on track, to attract new capital project funding, uh, the, the pressures with which you, you've heard a little bit about uh, already this evening in West Whitby. Uh, so we certainly are doing our best and have committed to do our part to make sure these uh, projects stay on time now going forward. Thank you. Trustee Thatcher. Thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, I, um, I, I just want to say, Lisa, this, uh, this is indeed very good news for us, as we are one of the fastest growing boards in the province at the moment. Um, I was particularly happy to see the schools in North Oshawa. They are, have been very much well overdue. Uh, the last secondary school we built there was Maxwell Heights. So this is very welcome. Um, in terms of um, capital priorities, I was going to speak yet again to the West Whitby situation and our enrollment pressures, but Associate Director Wright uh, did cover that off um, uh, in response to the question from one of our constituents, our Whitby constituents, obviously. Um, 
I was just going to ask, as, as um, we've been traveling around visiting schools, you know, we're starting to see a 50%, as much as 50% increase in enrollment in some of our schools, and uh, uh, some of our kindergarten classes now at 28 and 30 at this point in time. Um, so I guess my question is uh, around the approval process, and I was just kind of wondering where the uh, Whitby schools sit in terms of priority there, if, if uh, you wouldn't mind. Go ahead, go ahead uh, Lisa Bianca. I'm just trying to get the okay, there speaker. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, and through you, Madam Chair. Um, when the uh, we're expecting a capital priority call sometime this spring. When last we spoke with our uh, capital analyst, they had indicated that a capital priority call would be coming. Um, with having uh, submitted West Whitby twice, uh, both in you know in 2021 and 2022, and seeing the uh, the increase in enrollment, the pace that that development is coming on, there's no doubt that it will be very near the top of our, our priority list. Um, the uh, the parameters, the number of projects we can request, that type of thing, all remains to be seen um, until we get the memo uh, from them. But but certainly, staff are, are gathering the information and preparing the business case as, as we speak and, uh, and we will definitely be, uh, be submitting um, when we're allowed to, when we're permitted to. Thank you. Moving on to Trustee Linton. Um, thank you and through you, Chair Edwards. Um, I've just taken a quick brief moment to also recognize that January is Tamil Heritage Month um, and share my appreciation um, for the informative events and celebrations that have taken place through um, the, the region of Durham. So some of the questions have been asked, um, asked and somewhat answered, but um, you know, I'm looking particularly at um, the Pickering Creekwood site, which as mentioned, has seen you know, the timelines pushed um, more than once. Um, so I'm just, well, I don't see anything, and unless it was in, in past reports, anything to support some of the schools that are dealing with the overflow and somewhat overcrowding by the site not being built um, with any projects. So just wondering if, you know, through projections or, you know, if there is anything that's happening, any unresolved issues that may see that timeline of September 2024 being pushed again and or um, are there contingency plans for the schools that are supporting this overflow um, to, I guess, manage the number of students that now attend in these schools? Thank you, and through you, Madam Chair. Um, currently, the holding uh, schools for Pickering Creekwood are Valley View Public School and Valley Farm. Uh, both have uh, have um, done a you know a very good job of uh, of you know assisting us with uh, with taking those extra students. Valley View has uh, has a number of portables, uh, as does Valley Farm. Um, we are working on some classroom upgrades at Valley Farm. To uh, to you know help them uh, you know accommodate their student population in the best way uh, best way possible. We're not seeing um, significant continued growth. Um, I I guess that's the the. Um, result of you know the Creekwood school being you know sort of uh, in development for for so long so we're not seeing the rapid pace that we're seeing in some of the other sectors so we are able to accommodate them uh, go, accommodate them going forward um, you know I we're still hopeful that we uh, we can have a 2024 opening um, unfortunately I have to um, you know again lay that at the uh, the feet of the ministry uh, is you know if approvals need to come through in a timely manner. Uh, we have a very close relationship, working relationship with our uh, capital analyst who advocates on our behalf very strongly, but uh, it, it, there's, there's a lot of projects in the board that want to go forward, and um, so budget permitting, approvals permitting, we will meet that date. Um, if not, I will be back to uh, to report and uh, and and give you all the reasons uh, why. But at this point in time, it's early in the year, and we remain hopeful. Okay, Trustee Linton. Okay, moving on to trust, uh, Trustee Morton. 
Thank you, and through you, Chair Edwards. First of all, I need to say thank you so much for your work on the Beaverton Thora rebuild, understanding that the first ministry approval was granted five years ago. It has taken us that long, but we are moving on, and I thank you for your work on that. I do have a question regarding the North Oshawa Secondary School. We know that the needs are great in North Oshawa, and we've had conversations about the opening date of 2026. Is there any way that we could move a little bit more quickly on that? Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, I would love to be able to say we could move quickly. We are moving um, you know, uh, through the development process as fast as possible. Um, we are using um, you know, proven designs. Um, we've engaged the, the, uh, the city uh, early on. Um, with the size of the school we need to build, it's about a 24-month uh, construction period. So working back from, say, September 2025, we would need to be under construction now. So um, as much as we will uh, push forward and try and uh, accelerate development as quickly as possible, I think moving um, or, or planning for an opening earlier than 2026 um, would be um, just not possible given the time we need to build, unfortunately. Thank you. Moving on to student trustee Ben Cameron. Thank you, Chair. I know we all love talking about capital. Um, just, I'm not asking for like a prediction, but just these dates, I mean, they're not, they're not that far away. Um, it looks to me like these are the best case scenario, at least for the 2024 um, open dates. And I'm just wondering, other than asking the ministry for more to just make sure um, that these schools open, like what else can be done to, to help <laughs> make sure that the schools get open next year? Through you, Madam Chair. Thanks for your question, Ben. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with timing. Um, timing is just so critical. Uh, for instance, you know, when we get when we get approval to go into construction in December, um, we really we we you know, if we have a mild December, we can get work done. But there, you know, it, it's sort of a slow start, you know, um, before we can really ramp up and build. If we get the go ahead to go in, you know, uh, February or March, um, it's prime, you know, it's prime building season. So uh, some of it has to do with timing. Um, you know, we're, we're comfortable with the 2024 dates, particularly uh, for North Oshawa um, and, uh, and Beaverton. We think we're well positioned for those. Pickering we're, we're working on as well. It's a little bit further behind in, in the development approvals part, not the design, but the, the approvals piece. So we are, uh, we are comfortable with that. But it's, uh, it is a very lengthy process and timing of the process is, uh, is key as well. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. I'm not seeing any further questions. Thank you very much, Lisa Bianca, for all the, answering all our questions. We appreciate it. Moving on to the Special Education Advisor Committee report, my understanding it will be uh, Trustee Oldfield that will be doing the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, and through you, Chair Edwards. Um, the November 11th meeting, uh, Trustee Miller and myself were not in attendance. That was attended by previous board members. But there are two things that I wanted to highlight coming out of that report. Uh, the first is, um, and we heard uh, Director Williams-Taylor talk about the ongoing transportation issue. And on page 80 of uh, our package, uh, you can see the community concerns that were coming through this committee, concerns around the bus driver shortage, and that there are issues with equi equity and access to buses. So something for us to uh, definitely keep in mind when dealing with the ongoing uh, transportation issue. Uh, the second is at page 77, and this is the um, a new supply uh, educational assistant orientation. Uh, and as I understand, this is a new onboarding training. 
that was a collaboration between or with QP, Health and Safety, Inclusive Student Services, Innovative Technology and Recruitment. Uh, so, uh, which looks like a positive in terms of uh, recruitment and retention and making sure that supports are being provided adequately for students. So those are the two things. Uh, so I move acceptance of the SEAC committee report dated November 11th, 2022. Thank you. I have a first, I have a seconder. Trustee Cunningham, any further questions on the, on the minutes of SEAC? See none. Uh, those in favor? Anybody opposed? That is carried, the report is carried. Thank you, moving on to uh, the officer report, Trustee Cunningham. Thank you and through you, Chair. At this point, I do not have anything new to report. However, this week is the Public Education Symposium, so I expect there will be a thorough report coming out of that. Thank you, Trustee Cunningham. There's no correspondence or memos, so we're on to our last item, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Trustee Thatcher, <laughs> Trustee Arsenault, this meeting is adjourned, thank you.